Ineffective CEOs are the reasons many startup businesses fail to launch. The corporate world has grown more competitive, so a strong beginning is critical. And sometimes, the problem is not with the product but with the persons in charge of launching them. Several organizations fail to reach their full potential due to numerous errors committed by those in authority. For instance, many individuals assume that since they conceptualized a company idea, they should be the only ones in control. While this may work for some individuals, it seldom works for most people, particularly CEOs and managers of huge organizations. A lack of a strategy or approach to achieve the company's objectives is another typical blunder that makes it difficult for managers to lead an organization effectively. As a founder, you need to set achievable goals that will serve as a guideline for your organization by familiarizing yourself with the proven principles in this summary. The position of a leader isn't one of comfort but of thorough dedication through extensive planning, research, and marketing. The information in this summary will help first-time CEOs understand their present and future issues. If you are a seasoned CEO, this tidbit will help you evaluate your company's overall performance and personal ambitions. At the end of this piece, every CEO should have what their company needs, an objective to strive toward and the necessary tools to do a great job. When starting a business, it is important to have a partner who can help you deal with emotional stress. Sometimes, starting an organization is quite complex. There are many long hours, rejections, and occasional bouts of lack of self-confidence. For those who try to start an organization alone, this burden is even more demanding, and they get tired quickly because of the intense emotional baggage. This is why many businesses thrive when co-founders work together. As you try to establish a company, you should look for a partner with complementary abilities to your own, which will significantly alleviate the burden of doing things alone. The biggest danger for a company is spreading precious resources too thinly and obtaining few or no clients. A partner doesn't always have to be available to the organization in the long run. Some partners are best needed when you have no idea what to do, while some are quite good at stabilizing a crumbling business. You will undoubtedly hire people with far more capabilities as your business grows, and your partner's goal is to help you get to a sustainable level. Once you get to that point, it will be a bonus if they keep adding value because having a partner at this stage helps you handle things more efficiently without feeling burnout. Over time, each new hire must find a way to figure out the priorities, vision, and actions of the people on the team so that they can all work together. With one business partner playing a vital role in introducing and familiarizing new hires to the system through the onboarding and expansion process, another founder can focus on sales. The primary goal of a company is to create a product that people will be willing to buy and recommend. The concept of creating a marketable product is known as product market fit, PMF, which means that a product in the market are marketable. Simply put, it means creating a good enough product that people are willing to buy and recommend after they try it. Revenue generated from sales, customer satisfaction reviews, and feedback are some of the indicators that show whether a company meets PMF. If you stay committed to building the right team, you can create a system that allows you to collaborate with amazing people. When you've found the product market fit, you can then swoop in and quickly establish a foothold in the market because you now possess a sustainable business. You'll need to make many people aware of your product or service, educate them about the sales process, get rid of technical debt, and add all the features promised in your roadmap. All this needs to be done by talented people with a lot of experience, which means you have to hire professionals who can work with you physically or remotely. When a company hires remote workers, and the team begins to grow, there is a likelihood that employees may not be able to deliver adequate results. At this stage, the CEO may have to do more work and go longer hours to keep the business going. To combat the effect of employees' underperformance, a formal management system that encourages feedback must be in place. But creating an efficient system isn't easy. For example, to prepare for and participate in one-on-one meetings with your team, you'll likely have to spend some extra time. There will be several meetings and numerous extra activities. As an executive officer or director, you must see these additional responsibilities necessary for establishing the proper system. A company employing 25 or 25,000 people can run well with the right approach without significant changes. Did you know? According to Forbes, as of 2020, 90% of startups fail to launch successfully. Any great organizational structure requires to-do lists that serve as reminders of the set goals.
An aspiring CEO needs to have a plan for getting things done. As a CEO, you are the creator of the work culture and the convener of information that helps the team work efficiently. When you set an example for your team, they will follow your lead and be more efficient as a group. The book Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen explains an efficient system that ensures success as you navigate leadership. This system comprises the following steps. Next actions are the activities on your to-do list, broken down into different areas of context. Waiting for comprises the list of things you have requested and are expecting others to do. Someday, maybe is a list of things you want to do in the future but don't have to do now. Agenda. Unproductive leaders spend much time talking about or responding to problems right away. In reality, this approach is a waste of time and resources. A better way to deal with your problems is to group them and talk about them at once. Projects entail complex plans with more than one next step that must be done sequentially. Write down all the steps you need to take to finish the project, then add them to your next actions list as each one is finished. Goals are a list of the 10-year goals for your organization and quarterly objectives and key results, OKRs, for each department, team, and individual. You should keep copies of these OKRs and look at them often to figure out what to do next. Assigning deadlines and rewards for completed tasks motivates employees to accomplish more, which benefits your business. One of the most often expressed CEO worries is a sense of unfinished business after weeks of to-do lists, the natural consequence of living in the now and losing sight of the future. Greg McEwen's top goal framework may assist you in resolving this problem. This model encourages leaders to spend at least two hours every day on their top goals. Doing this helps managers keep tabs on their progress and reevaluate their positions. Your company's success is dependent on employees' cooperation and their desire to support your decisions. Although your ideas may be unique and creative, and your routines are innovative and successful, none of that will help you establish a good company if there is a lack of internal cooperation. Groups, like individuals, establish habits, and it's better to start with excellent group behaviors than to modify negative group habits afterward. Team conversations encourage in-depth analysis of an organization's challenges and make employees feel important to the company's progress. For the most efficient and productive decision-making processes, insist that anybody wishing to debate an issue do so in advance. This should be detailed enough that there are few or no questions at the decision meeting. It may be done in two ways. The hard way involves writing an extremely detailed analysis right away. The easy way includes managers preparing a draft and disseminating it to the meeting attendees, encouraging them to reply in kind with their comments and questions before the meeting so that the manager will be better prepared. Convincing your staff to buy into a choice is a key leadership problem. If your team members aren't involved in the decision-making process, they'll contribute half-heartedly or not at all. People engage more when they feel that they're a part of a process and their opinion matters. The more control they feel over the outcome, the more involved they will be. A choice may be made in three ways. Method 1. The manager ultimately decides, informs the team, and answers any questions. Method 2. A hypothetical response is generated, discussed with the team, written and verbal participation is encouraged, and final replies are selected. Method 3. The manager asks the team to a meeting to address the problem with no middleman. It's a team effort, and a consensus is reached if feasible. Method 1 is adequate for daily, low-impact difficulties, while Method 3 is best for significant, fundamental concerns. Method 2 addresses anything in between, which covers most of the significant choices. Overlooking the recruitment process can complicate the execution of any business plan. One of the primary objectives of any organization is to employ only a player's, superstars who can accomplish a job while fitting in with your company's culture. Personal and professional referrals are by far the most successful way to hire the appropriate individuals. To assist new hires, create a list of all the items that a team member needs to be effective. Making a video of this list helps reinforce its contents for existing or former employees. On an employee's first day, have them arrive two hours later than usual so that everyone can meet them. Assign each new team member a friend with whom they will check in daily for two weeks for 15 minutes. During these minutes, the new team member may ask questions, and the friend can verify that they are following the checklist. Closing deals is a game of depth. 
It requires building deep relationships and understanding with the qualified leads in order to close the deal. Tilda Matt Mokery. If a new team member does not live up to expectations or makes a half hearted effort to do so, it is preferable to let them go quickly. If you terminate someone's appointment without providing recorded grounds, they may sue the business for unfair dismissal. Although these lawsuits are seldom successful, they are inconvenient to deal with. Create written documents to reduce the risk of one of these lawsuits. A side advantage of this paperwork is that the individual may start performing better. Create a documented performance improvement plan, PIP, with 7, 30, 60, and 90 day milestones. Meet regularly to review these written milestones. If, after 30 days, the team member hasn't achieved one of the goals, you can give them an opportunity to make things right after 30 or 90 days. If they refuse to improve, you should let them go. Most CEOs believe that more salespeople will increase revenue. Increasing team size is seldom the fundamental barrier to progress. An actual sales increase can only be achieved with a reliable income. Investors value knowing that a corporation has developed accurate estimates to prevent being caught off guard by unforeseen events. Conclusion. Once you embrace your role as a founder, manager, or leader, you will better understand how to maintain a successful firm. Many CEOs struggle to perform effectively because they have no notion of what to do when times become tough. It's natural to feel overwhelmed by the many challenging requirements associated with starting and sustaining a firm, hence the need for partners. The value of having a partner cannot be overstated since having someone else assist you allows you to concentrate on the work at hand. Ask your team to suggest both a value and the name of an employee who exemplifies it. Tilda Matt Mokery. Being a CEO is not an easy job and should not be taken lightly. Contrary to popular belief, the executive officer is responsible for most of the challenging circumstances in every firm. Investors don't care who the workers are, they point the finger at the top when something goes wrong. A successful leader must comprehend various concepts, including managing a team, dealing with disobedient employees, and implementing effective communication tactics in the workplace. A leader serves as the mirror through which others perceive themselves, so you must give yourself as much attention as you do to others. An organization can stay relevant and competitive in the market if they are willing to find the right team. Truth be told, the job as a founder isn't easy, and the position isn't one where you relax all the time. Current and prospective founders need to accept that they will constantly make tough decisions for themselves and the company and that all this put together is what makes one a great CEO. Try this. When choosing a business partner, do not let emotions guide you. Choose the person best qualified and work with them. Avoid being rude or condescending to your employees. Appreciate your team members with rewards and be active in decision-making processes.